OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to sum every nth row. In my example, I want to sum every fifth row or fifth value in this column. Now I'm going to show you two methods. One will work for Excel 365. It's probably the easiest method. And the second will work in any version of Excel. So first of all, we're going to start with a function called row. And I'm going to reference all the rows within my data. And then I'll just close the bracket. Now I'm in Excel 365 and you can see that it spills the results into surrounding cells. Now what I want to do is actually start with the number one. So I'm just going to subtract one from this formula. So now I've got numbers one down to 20. Now what I want to do is I want to return zero for each number that's divisible by five because the values that I want to add up are in a position that are a multiple of five. Now I can do this using a function called mod. And what it does is returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. So our numbers are returned by the row function and our divisor is going to be five. So if I press enter, you'll see now that each of these quarter rows have a value of zero. So my next step is to run a test to evaluate which of those values do return a zero. So I'm just going to put equals zero at the end there. And you'll see I get trues and falses, trues, wherever I've got a quarter value. Now I can use this test within the filter function. Now the array will be the sales amounts contain the quarter values that I want to add up, comma, and include has to be a logical test and that's returned by the formula that we previously created. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see it's returning those quarter values. And then I just want to add them up. So I put the whole thing within the sum function and I get my result. OK, so the problem is, is that filter function is available in Excel 365, but not in previous versions. But you can use some product instead. What we are going to do, though, is copy this logical test, because we can use that same logical test in the next formula. So what I need to do here, though, is to return zeros and ones. Now, if you're in an older version of Excel 365, it's not going to spill like you can see here, but you can see those trues and falses by selecting your formula and pressing the F9 key at the top of your keyboard. But you must undo that, so Control Z, otherwise you're going to hard code those values into that formula. Now to convert these trues and falses to zeros and ones, I'll just put zero plus and then a pair of brackets around my previous formula. And there are the zeros and ones. I can then put that within the sum product function. And array one is returned by this formula, give me the zeros and ones, comma. And the array two is going to be the sales figures. And then close the bracket. Now, if I press enter, you see I get exactly the same answer. So if you're wondering how this works, what some product does is multiply the values returned in this array, these ones and zeros, by the corresponding values within this array. So in other words, it's going to multiply every fifth value by one, but all the others by zero. And then what it'll do is it'll just sum up those results. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.